In this uh, world's hardest easy geometry problem, we're given a triangle ABC, and we're asked to find the missing angle measure here, namely AED, given the information here for the base angles of this triangle. So notice right away that the base triangles, uh, base angles in this triangle are both 80 degrees. They're equal in measure. So the base angles are equal. That tells you that triangle ABC is isosceles, namely AB and BC are equal in length, okay, the sides. So let's label that. So we know that AB is congruent to BC. Okay, so triangle ABC is isosceles. Okay, so the next thing you want to do, since it's an isosceles triangle, you can draw an altitude from the base AC to the top vertex B in such a way that it's going to be dividing the AC into two equal parts, right? Because you know that it's going to be passing through the midpoint of AC. And that's only possible because it's an isosceles triangle. Okay, and only possible if this is perpendicular, makes a 90 degree angle with side AC. So we know right away that it passes through the midpoint. So these two will, will be equal in, in length. Okay, we can label this point uh, F. Now also what you want to do, you want to make a line segment coming from the edge points E to the edge AB and also label that point. And you want to make it horizontal so that it's parallel to the base side AC. Okay, and I'm going to label this point G because we already have F. Notice right away there's also an intersection right here. It's going to be a very important intersection. And also one more line segment is needed. It's going to be connecting the C vertex of this triangle and the G, the G point on the edge AB, on the side AB. Okay, so now why is this important? Notice that it's a very well-known theorem that uh, wherever you are on the altitude, when it comes to the uh, isosceles triangle, any point on this altitude, any point in this altitude will be equidistant to any points as long as uh, we're talking about horizontal line segments, right? So point here will be equidistant from G and E, right? Point of intersection here will be equidistant from G and E. This point of intersection will be equidistant from G and E and also from A and C, right? For this reason, we know that this side, and let's label this intersection H, so side AH and AC will be congruent for that reason. Okay? Now notice this is 60 degrees right away. And since AH and AC are, HC are congruent, triangle a, a, ACH is also is, uh, uh, isosceles, right? So triangle ACH is isosceles. And that's because AH and HC are congruent. So AH congruent to HC. Okay? Now since it's congruent, that means the angles opposite of which are the H, AH and HC respectfully, respectively will be congruent as well, right? So that means this is 60, the opposite side to which is the CH, and this has to be 60, the 50 plus a missing one, opposite side to the AH. Now the missing angle, since we already have 50 degrees, is going to be 10 degrees, right, to make 60 degrees possible. So that means the third missing angle in this AHC is going to be also 60 degrees, because we have 60, 60, and plus another 60 to give us 180 degrees as the interior angle sum. So thus, this is 60 degrees, and we have to change this. We have to change this definition that this is actually equilateral. Right? So we will erase that. We don't need that anymore. So this is equilateral. Okay. So this is equilateral. Now notice right away that um, by definition, 
uh, angle A, H, C, and G, H, E are vertical angles, right? And vertical angles must be congruent, so this, is, has, this has to be 60 degrees. Now, the next thing to notice is that since G, E, and A, C are parallel, because we made them that way, um, angle measure E, G, H, we can just say E, G, H, is congruent to angle measure G, C, A. So angle G, C, A, G, C, A. And why are these two congruent? They're congruent because since G, E, and A, C are parallel, and you can treat GC like a transversal, it will make these two, EGH and GHC, the 60 degree angle, congruent. Because these are alternate interior angles. Recall that. Recall that name. So they're alternate interior angles. That means this guy is also 60 degrees because this guy is 60, right? GCA is 60 degrees. Right? So that means this guy... E, G, H is also 60 degrees. And what does that tell you? That tells you that this triangle, G, A, G, E, H is equilateral. Right? And that means this missing angle is also 60 degrees. And part of that angle, part of that 60 degree angle, is the angle that we're trying to find, A, E, D. Right? So we're getting closer and closer. So we have to work with a cluster of angles so that we will eventually get to this small angle. But we're getting there. So notice also part of this here is going to be another angle measure that we can find. Right away, notice that since, again, since GE and AC were parallel, BGE, BGE is congruent to angle BAC. BAC. And why is that? Just like the alternate interior angles that we use, this time we're going to use corresponding angles. Since GE and AC are parallel, corresponding angles are BGE and BAC. Right? Since BAC was 80 degrees, 60 plus 20, that means the corresponding angle to it, since we're talking about parallelism, is also going to be 80 degrees. Right? So this we can mark as 80 degrees. So that means the missing one to make a straight angle BGD or BGA, however you want to name it, is going to be 180 minus the sum of this, minus 140, which is 40 degrees. Right? So this is going to be 40 degrees. Okay. Now another missing angle measure that you should find to get... To, we have to find as many angle measures as possible in this cluster of triangles here to get to the unknown angle measure that we're trying to find, right? So, notice right away we can work with uh, angle a, uh, triangle AD, ADC, right? ADC. So ADC has angle measure 80, it has angle measure 50, and has one unknown, right? So we can find that. 180 minus the sum of these three numbers. 60, 20, that's 80, plus 50, 130. 180 minus 130 is 50 degrees. Okay, so we found that. Now here's what, what, uh, what you should notice. Notice that ADC is isosceles, right? ADC is isosceles. It's isosceles because we have two angle measures, interior angle measures, base angles, we can say, that are 50 degrees. So that means, that means AC is congruent Right, the opposite side to the angle 50 is congruent to another opposite side of this 50 degrees, which is AD. Okay, this is very important. Now, uh, notice that also we can use AC in another triangle relationship here. Remember that we said, um, uh, notice that there are 60, 60, and 60 degrees. And we said that uh, this is equilateral because we have 60 degrees everywhere. So we know that triangle AHC is equilateral. And part of that, part of that fact that we're going to use is that AC can be used in another relationship in that triangle, right? AC happens to be a shared side of this triangle AHC and also ADC, the one that we've explored right before this, right? So AC is congruent to AH, 
because this is equilateral, right? At least two sides must be equal. Well, in fact, all three of them are, but we don't need HC, we need AH, right? Because this is gonna be part of this triangle whose angle measure we're trying to find, right? So AC is congruent to AH. Now notice right away, we're gonna use the transitive property, famous geometry pr property, transitive property, saying that if the first side is congruent to the second, and the first side is congruent to the third, that means the second and the third are also congruent, right? This is the transitive property, right? So that means AD is congruent to AH because both of them, both AD and AH, are congruent to the same side AC, so they must be congruent as well, right? So this is transitive. Now, what does that do? That, that uh, lets us have very important information because we know AD is going to be a side opposite of some angle, right? To find that angle, we need to actually connect one more, one more segment, uh, the point D and the intersection H. Notice that there is an angle measure. There is an angle measure opposite of which is the AD, right? So DHA is the angle opposite of which AD is located, the side AD, okay? And also this angle measure, ADH, is going to be the angle measure opposite side of which is going to be AH, right? Another side that we're working on, speaking of the congruency. So now, judging from the congruency here, we can also set these angles equal, right? So we know that DHA, angle DHA, must be congruent to the angle... ADH, ADH, okay? So we're talking about the fact that ADH is an isosceles triangle. ADH is isosceles, right? Because its base angles ADH and GHA are congruent. So now we can actually we actually, you might think we cannot find this angle measure, but we can. First of all, so we, we just said that these two are congruent. And we can find one of them because there's a third angle measure that is known to us. Right? So we can find DHA. So measure of DHA is going to be simply 180 minus the third angle measure in that triangle ADH. And that will give us the sum of these two that are equal. Since they're equal, we can divide that sum by two, and that will give us the measure of DHA, right? So that's going to give us what? 160 over 2, which is 80 degrees, right? So this angle measure is 80 degrees. Now, what does that give us? Since that one was 60 here, GHE is 60, DAH uh, DHA, so many letters, is 80, then to make a straight angle of 180 degrees, this missing one has to be the difference of 180 and the sum of 60 and 80. Sum of 60 and 80 is 140. Thus, this has got to be the 40 degrees. Now, look what that gets us to. Now, we see that triangle GDH is isosceles. GDH is isosceles because we have two base angles measuring 40 degrees right okay we have that and now the opposite sides to these two congruent angles must be congruent right so we know for a fact that these two must be congruent now notice right away what happens Notice that this picture, G, D, H, E, this quadrilateral with four sides, G, D, H, E, is a kite. How do I know that? I know that from the fact that I have a pair of adjacent sides that is congruent. I have a pair of opposite angles that are congruent. And I also know that DG is not congruent to GE. 
right? Simply because we know this is equilateral because this has got to be the 60 degree angle. So that means this equilateral has all three sides congruent. But we know that GH is not congruent to GD, right? Because this angle measure cannot be 40 degrees, right? All these two are 40 degrees, right? So these two sides are congruent. But the third side is not congruent to these two, right? This is not an equilateral triangle. Right? DGH is not an equilateral triangle. Thus, GD cannot be congruent by the transitive property to GE either because it was not congruent to GH. Since GH and GE were congruent by the transitive property, since we're talking about equilateral triangle, GD cannot be congruent to, cannot be congruent to GE. Uh, GE, right? So this cannot be a rhombus, right? This cannot be a square because this is not 90 degrees. This cannot be a rectang rectangle because this is not, not 90 degrees. It cannot be a uh, general parallelogram like this, right? Because the opposite side, uh, the adjacent sides are not congruent, right? This is a different side. This is a different length this side, right? But these two are. So the only other possible choice that that you can make here the only possible conclusion is that this is a kite right there's no other way a kite usually looks like this okay something like this okay one pair of uh, adjacent sides being equal the second pair of adjacent sides being equal one pair of opposite angles being equal right and the second pair is not equal and let's check that. We know that this is going to be 100 degrees because 40 plus 40 is 80. 180 minus 80 is 100, right? This is 100. This is one type of angle measure. But the opposite to that is not going to be the same as this one, right? There's only one pair of opposite angles that are equal. The other pair will be a different number, right? So this is 100. But this is 60, right? Because this is an equilateral triangle. 60, 60, the remaining one is 60, right? So this is 60 and this is 100, right? There's no way that this can be anything but a kite. Now we know that in a kite, uh, diagonal DE divides the angles, these two respective angles, into two equal parts, right? So we know that measure of GEH can be expressed as the sum of measure GED and measure of AED, the one that we're trying to find. And we also know that the measure of GD is equal to the measure of AED because we just said that a kite diagonal ED divides the angle GEH into two equal parts, right? So these two are equal. So we can make a substitution algebraically. We know that GEH is equal to 60 degrees, right? Because that's the third missing one. This GEH is the third missing angle measure for the equilateral triangle GHE, right? So we know this is 60. So we know, now we can make a substitution. We can make GED be equal to AED instead, we can make that substitution for the first term. So that means AED will be added to itself. So that means twice, two times the measure of AED is equal to 60 degrees. Dividing both sides by two will solve for the measure of AED. So guess what that is? That is equal to 60 over 2, 30 degrees. So the answer to this riddle is 30 degrees. So I hope this was a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you were ex just as excited as I was. And I'll see you in my next videos.